Welcome to Influential Entrepreneurs, bringing you interviews with elite business leaders and experts, sharing tips and strategies for elevating your business to the next level. Here's your host, Mike Saunders. Hello and welcome to this episode of Influential Entrepreneurs. This is Mike Saunders, the Authority Positioning Coach. Today we have with us Jay Weinstein, who's the founder of Deep Dive Retirement. Jay, welcome to the program. Nice to be here, Mike. Thank you. Hey, I'm looking forward to talking with you because when I hear the word deep dive retirement, I like to think, or it gives me the connotation that, ooh, we're going to take a deep dive. We're not going to just give a cursory surface level look at a certain topic. So with retirement, we want to go and, and get that deep dive and make sure that everyone is getting the best advice and learning everything that they need to learn. So I really like the name of that, uh, that uh, company name that you picked. So get us started with your story. What's your background, and how did you get started into the financial services industry? Well, sure. Yes, there's a lot to look at when you're planning to retire. There's many elements that most people don't really look at for some reason. Uh, we're so focused often on just investments and rate of return. My background is I started in the financial service in the late 80s. Uh, I saw a lot of the ups and downs in the market, 87, when there was a huge crash in the early 2000s, and then 2008. And, you know, it was never a dull moment. And uh, I, I saw the impact that it had on people's lives, you know, and, uh, you know, some of it was good and some of it wasn't so good. And uh, along the way, I, I worked for a small business consulting firm that designed small business pension plans, defined benefit pension plans, which are the greatest thing in the world. Uh, most large corporations have them in the federal government, the states and the counties. But this was a, a des uh, we were designing them for small businesses as well. And uh, I was involved with a lot of the actuaries and, and I learned what life expectancy credits are and I use them in the planning that I do now. I think it's a very uh, missed uh, portion of retirement planning that can add a lot of value for a lot of people. So that's kind of what I do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Neat. So life expectancy credits, it, uh, it, it kind of makes me think about, well, if we're going to run the numbers on a life expectancy of you retiring at this age, and then, you know, maybe your end of life is this age, then that's what we need to plan for. But in reality, those numbers might have moved over the last few decades, right? I mean, you've got to recalculate the expectations based on life expectancy that might have changed because of people taking better care of themselves, staying in better health seeing the doctor more, exercising. So how does life expectancy impact um, you know, your, your advice to your clients? Right. Very, very good point. Uh, yes, we are living longer. We have better medicines, but we're staying healthier. We're exercising. Uh, uh, somebody who's, uh, you know, the uh, uh, 70 is really the, the, new, the 50 years old, but it used to be, as they say. And so we've got a plan uh, to make sure our money supply lasts a longer time. And that also puts a, a stress on the actuaries at the Social Security Administration and pensions to make sure that the money continues to roll in. Uh, but that is the, the aspect of making sure your money lasts uh, is really what I focus on because we are living longer. There's more stress on our money with the ups and downs of the market. Uh, inflation, taxes, fees, and many other things. And so life ex uh, life expectancy credits really come into play. And uh, I think it's very important that people have a, a good understanding of what they're about. Now, when you say the word credits, life expectancy credits, it you know, I'm not in your world, so I hear life expectancy and I think, oh, well, if the life expectancy of myself is X age, then I need to plan for that. What's a life expectancy credit? Yeah, very good point. A life expectancy credit is what the actuaries, the people that figured this stuff out, the real you know number nerds, they they actually uh, give you a credit for each birth date that you have. That means the older you get, right, the higher the percentage of payout you can receive on your money and have that be paid for the rest of your life. Okay. Now, let me explain a little further on that. It has nothing to do with rate of return. Rate of return is also part of it. But a bigger calculation is what is the percentage of payout? Is it going to be 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10%? It can go up to 12 or 13% of payout. 
And what they're saying essentially is that the older you get, the shorter your life expectancy becomes. If you're if your life expectancy is 87 and you're 65 years old, well, that means you have 18 years on the charts. Now, when you're 70 years old, you have 70. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, if you're 65, you have 20, 22 years. Uh, my math. And then and then as you hit 70, you have 17 years left. If you're 75, you've got 12 years left. Now, your life expectancy does push back the older you get, but it, it's not year for year, obviously, right? So uh, the older you get, your, your life expectancy shrinks. And the actuary is saying, we need to get you back your money plus the interest, the growth on your money, over your lifetime. In other words, we want to return all of your money plus the growth on it before you pass away. That's what they look at. Yeah. So the older you get, the higher the percentage of payout they have to provide to you to achieve that goal. If you live beyond if you live beyond that life expectancy, that's on the issuing company and of course that's uh money that they continue to pay you even though uh you you're living a longer time. You know, there's a whole lot more that goes into planning for retirement than here's the amount of money I have, here's the rate of return I'm hoping to get, and here's the age that I think I'll need it. And I think that a lot of uneducated people just think in those simple terms, but you're bringing up points that just go in kind of like what we said at the beginning, deep dive. This is a deep dive that that goes into many layers that people need to consider. So talk a little bit how this ties into retirement planning. What if some, it makes me think about what if someone starts late and they feel like they've got to catch up? Well, you don't want to push the, the envelope because then you could make risky decisions, right? Mm -hmm, sure. Well, one other thing I wanted to mention about life expectancy credits that you receive on the payout of your money, again, this has nothing to do with rate of return, but the payout percentage, is that you're buying into, in many cases, just like if you had a pension or even Social Security, you're buying into a large group, law of large numbers, and there's a lot of protection there, right? Because the actuaries figure out the, the large group and all the different calculations that go on, which I won't get into on this call. But basically, what I call it is the herd mentality. Herds have protection because of large numbers. Mm -hmm. And that's the same thing that's true when you buy into uh, products that have life expectancy credits. Now, uh, to answer your question specifically, how, what does this have to do with income planning is that we have another thing called inflation that we all are very, very aware about, especially in this past year. And uh, we have to offset inflation. Otherwise, we're going to start digging deeper and deeper into our money supply and lessening that money supply. And it's going to cause a spiraling, a downward spiral accelerated. So where we lose, you know, we lose a lot of our money and which we can outlive it. That's the that's the goal here is to make sure that we don't outlive our money mm. when we factor in all the negatives and inflation and taxes and fees and losses and all those kinds of things. So. That's where life expectancy comes into play is that we can layer money in, in various different ways. And this won't get into it on this call. It's very individualized for each person, depending on age and money supply and all those kinds of things. But we can layer it so that we can have income needs met now or very early, but then have use those life expectancy credits to further uh, increase our income in three or five years down the road, and then another three or five years down the road so that we're using these life and we're continually accumulating these and is boosting our income, which does the fantastic job of offsetting inflation. Which then ties into here's how to better prepare for your retirement and make sure you don't run out of money in retirement. So all of these things are, are you know, kind of looking down the road and make sure that you're planning correctly, right? Well, that's right. And if you if you don't do that, you know, what's the alternative? Many yeah. millions of people are relying on their financial, you know, the investment planners. And I want to state that I am not an investment planner, I, uh, investment advisor. I'm not going to tell you where to invest your securities or all those kinds of things. I look at classifications and taxes and fees and all other kinds of things that surround your retirement planning. But I don't I don't handle the investments. But it, but if you if you look at your investment advisor or the securities that you may be using, uh, it, it's a risky proposition to say that money is going to last the rest of my life 
right? Because yep. you, you don't know what the market's going to bear yeah. and, that, and that kind of thing. You, yeah, you don't know what the market's going to bear as far as returns. Then you don't know what the tax rate's going to be. You don't know what inflation's going to be. There's so many variables. And, you know, it's kind of like if you take a step back, a lot of people in the uh, the world you live in, financial services, where you work with clients talking about money, um, you almost become a life coach. You know, you almost become something like, you know, hey, um, don't, don't fret about the things you can't control, only sweat about the things you can control. And what does retirement look like for you? So it kind of what you just said there, it's really interesting because we can control our budget, our outflow. We can control the money we put into, you know, our type of retirement accounts. We can't control what rate of return is going to be. We can't get more or less. And then we can't control what inflation does. We can't control the tax brackets that we're in. So I think that really kind of helps to make sure that, you know, some of your clients are moving forward and realizing, okay. I'm going to do the best I can with my money, put it with a trusted advisor so they can help guide me. Right. And and therein lies the risk yeah. because the investment advisors, uh, they don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. Not, I mean, there's good investment advisors and know, you know, that look at things and, and, and help solve issues. But the level of certainty is what I work with with people. I, I say to people, look, if you really believe in your investment advisor that he's going to he or she is going to uh, navigate you know the next 25 years of your life uh, till 90 years old or however long you live um ask them to put it in writing that they promise that you'll have inflated income income that will offset inflation and uh be protected you know taxes and fees and all that and you're going to come out with a with a, uh, a stable income that that, uh, that increases to, due to inflationary uh, increases and see if they'll put it in writing for you because uh, they're, they're, you'll find out quickly they yep. won't do it. <laughs> right. You, you know, and, and that's uh, things in writing are, are, in my opinion, very important to have because look, if you have a, a one or two bad years in the next 25 years, it, it's going to really change the, the trajectory of your ability to retire successfully. Uh, you don't want to go back to work at 82 years old, right? And so, so it's something that is very, very important to look at. You know, when we're talking about life expectancy credits and properly managing expectations for retirement, what issue does this really solve? And then why is that important for clients to consider? Right. Because, uh, we all, we've, You've worked 40 years, 45 years of your life, whatever it is, you've worked hard, you've had a career, uh, you know, you've made money, hopefully a lot of money, you saved a lot of money, you know, you've put a lot of blood, sweat and tears into your career and building an estate. And you deserve, you know, a, a very, very comfortable retirement where you don't have to worry anymore. And, uh, that's what pensions do, right? But pensions don't fulfill the, the income gap when you retire and Social Security. Uh, so you need to, you know, with your investments and things of that nature, uh, you want to, in, in my view, uh, uh, find a, a level of a percentage of your income that you need to have for the rest of your life, maybe 80% or maybe it's 120%. Uh, I do want to address that because it affects income. If you retire and we've designed a plan where you are at 125% of your net income, you've now offset inflation uh, because you can absorb 3 4% a year for many, several years uh, uh, if, you, if you follow what my thinking there. You know, there's two types of inflation. One is you know, the purchasing of, of assets or like a car or a house. Well, that inflates and it's more expensive. But the other part of inflation I do want to address is uh, your spending power, your income, and how it relates to the economy, and and you know what you have in and what you what you need to spend. Right? Well, things are going up in price, so your 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 uh, uh, income needs to increase with that. Yeah. Which which is hard, very very hard to do, especially if you're using securities and you lose money. Right? How are you going to beat inflation like that? So if we design a stable income plan that is a twenty five percent overage of what you retired on now you, you know you can absorb that inflation easily by socking away that extra money and and investing it or you just have that income flow coming in, in with guarantees 
that will will now you're you're beating inflation that route. I I I can go into more detail. I don't want to spend too much time on that, but I just want you to get the concept of it. Yeah, that's a that's a really really important point that a lot of people think that the number they have in their mind today is what they need to shoot for. But it reminds me of the old saying for from Wayne Gretzky. You know, he skates where the puck is headed. Well, if you only focused on right now. Five to 10 to 15 years down the road, that might not be where you need to be. So some of your points there that you make is really, really huge. So you say you're not an investment advisor. What is it that you do for your clients? Well, that's a very good question. There are so many other things that don't have to do with securities and rates of return. Tax planning is very important. And we look at using other products to generate tax-free income. We look at Roth conversions. Uh, We look at next generation planning. We look at uh, protecting against long term care costs because Medicare is not going to cover you in case you go into a nursing home and it costs you $100,000 a year. That's going to be a big dent in your assets. Uh, We look at installing with certain types of products, the life expectancy credits, uh, which are not securities based. Right. You have three. Uh, sectors of, in the economy. You've got Wall Street with securities. They're not going to offer you the life expectancy credits. The banks, the CDs, they're not going to offer you anything with life expectancy credits. And then you've got the insurance industry, which will. They hire actuaries to figure this stuff out. And it's a very overlooked area. There's billions of dollars that go into these types of companies and products, but not enough because people, people you know, they want that glitter. So we, I try to guide people, look, if you want the glitter, stay with your investment advisor for a portion of your money, but let's really build a stable income plan that doesn't use securities uh, and, 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 and gives you guarantees that you would not have otherwise. I think it's very, very important. All of my clients are very appreciative of that. So you use two words that stood out to me that started with the letter G, guide and guarantee. So I know that uh, we want to qualify the word guarantee, like you can't guarantee many things in life, but you focus on some of the financial vehicles that have some good safe uh, returns. And then I like the fact that you say you guide people because that means that you're not going to just cram people into this one thing and say, this is the best thing for you. Move on. You're explaining and educating and guiding them to make these wise decisions. So talk a little bit about um, some of those guaranteed um, uh, products. Right. Well, let, let me just, I will in a second, imagine you've got two main buckets to put your money. One is a securities arena that has no guarantees. Excuse me. Yeah. It goes ups and up and down. And then you have this other bucket where you could put money that has in writing guaranteed from major players in the market and they're backed up. Okay. Imagine you have two of those. So when I guide people, I say, look, with the life expectancy credits in the second bucket, we're going to really bump up your percentage of payout into the double digits. It could be 10, 9, 10, 11. If you wait long enough, we can get you to 12 or 13, or even I've seen 14% payouts on your money from your initial deposit, something that you just can't do anyplace else. Now, once we have that installed and we understand that, that makes your other monies, the monies that you do want to invest in securities, we can use that money now for income purposes uh, as you retire because it, um, it, it you could use that and it allows us to build up with the uh, life expectancy, rates of return and life expectancy credits on the second bucket. So mm-hmm. it, it allows for a much higher payout on your money without risk of you running out because we have it backed up. Now, you mentioned the type of products. These are what's called fixed indexed annuities. Uh, People have knee-jerk responses to annuities. Investment advisors hate them, Uh, but billions and billions are sold. But again, I don't even think they're sold correctly with the concept of life expectancy Mm. credits. It's very important that people understand this, and I teach people how this works, and I show you the charts and I show people how by waiting, we're going to get the rate of return on the annuity, but we're also going to get the life expectancy credit. I keep saying that over and over again because it's, I'm so trained in that area and, and I use it so often that it's just it's just almost mind boggling that how, how often it is completely missed in, in, in people's retirement planning. 
You know, I, I like that because I think that sometimes people um, remember grandma and grandpa telling you, don't ever do this or don't ever do that. <laughs> and you have it stuck in your head. But nowadays, like the 2.0 or the 3.0 version of a, a typical investment vehicle, when you layer in something like what we're talking about here, life expectancy credits, maybe it kind of gives you pause to go, okay, tell me a little bit more. So it sounds so powerful and interesting, but couldn't a good quality investment advisor do the same thing? Thing with some of their products and programs, why is it that they, you would need to talk with someone like yourself that knows some of these layering strategies? Right. Good point is, you know, an investment advisor, even the best ones, the answer is maybe they can and maybe they can't. Mm. Uh, it's a huge risk that you uh, that you're incurring by letting you by using this the markets to uh, replace your paycheck. You, you mm. know, if, you, if you understand that, it's you're using a moving target to replace your paycheck, and it's got to last for 25 you know, plus years. And if there's two, a husband and wife situation, that thing's got to last a long time, and it's got to weather the ups and downs, fees, taxes, inflation, and many other things. And so I would ask if, you know, investment advisors say, oh, we can do the same thing as that. We can do the same thing. I've heard that story hundreds of times. And I just say to who's ever considering, you know, and is concerned about their future is to have the advisor put it in writing, ask them yeah. to uh, write a document that says, we guarantee that your income will increase and that you last, you know, for as long as you live and, and we will back that up. Ask them to do that. And you'll find out, and I think I mentioned this earlier, they will never do that in a million Start years. Start But you, you can try it and see yep. what they say. And then I would say, now that you know there are alternatives out there to whoever's listening to this, uh, why you know, why take that kind of risk? I mean, that's really yeah. where the rubber meets the road. Why well, do and I you know, here's, you know how um, we all are trained to kind of, kind of, kind of think this way. Well, it's just the way we've always done things. Like you, you go to a company, like you said, you've got a, a, a history of working with companies and pensions and things like right. that. Well, you go to a boardroom to their quarterly meeting, and I'll bet you that one out of 10 meetings that you're going to hear someone go, well, we've always done it this way. And so with that thought in mind, I think that these typical investment advisors, like you're mentioning, and we're not mentioning names and companies, but it's that mindset. It might have been wonderful when you're in your 20s and 30s. Well, let me let me add to that. That's exactly right. You see, when you're in accumulation mode yes. and you don't need the money, you can weather the ups and downs. Weather and, the volatility. And, and, and it comes back and you say, you see, you know, my 401k turned into a 201k. Now it's a 601k, yeah. you know. And so that's fine. But the math, and I'm not a mathematician, but I'm very, very strong with numbers. I've devised, you know, massive spreadsheets and, you know, I, I simplify them. But basically, when you start taking income from that money, the math changes. When you have a downward uh, uh, period of time in the market and you're taking income, that really, really affects your money supply from that point on. And you didn't have to do that in the early days when you're accumulating. Yep. You didn't have to take money out. Now you do. So yep. it's a whole different game. Yeah. So nothing against that sector or that type of advisor. It's just like maybe possibly it might be you might be better served to have a little bit more of a tight portfolio of options and vehicles where you have those guarantees and it's protected so i think this is so powerful jay it's been really interesting talking with you if someone is listening to this going you know um maybe give me a second opinion what would that look like um so how can they reach out and connect with you well, sure. I'm always open. I keep my calendar open on this uh, page. There's a book a call button, and that will put you right into my calendar. Uh, there's never a cost or any obligation. This is not a sales process. This is an educational process that I'm going to give you more specific information. You can book a call anytime. Uh, I work late hours. I work on Saturday mornings. I'm kind of a workaholic. I'm, I'm crunching numbers all day long and designing plans for people. Uh, so just feel free to book it and uh, and and we'll have a nice chat. It's, Excellent. Well, Jay, I'll make sure that out. link is right in the show notes. And I really appreciate you coming on today. It's been a real pleasure talking with you. Well, Mike, thank you for your time. And I hope this is beneficial for people listening. 
You've been listening to Influential Entrepreneurs with Mike Saunders. To learn more about the resources mentioned on today's show or listen to past episodes, visit www.influentialentrepreneursradio.com.